everybody, it's Pastor Jonathan. And no, it's not just spring break, it's Easter. And welcome to Stonebridge's online Easter service. Christ is risen, we need not live in fear. Christ is risen, we shall live in hope. Christ is risen, he has risen indeed. King David wrote, let us worship God with tambourine and trumpet. Hey guys, thanks for joining us on this Easter weekend. Uh, this is the weekend when we celebrate the greatest event in all of human history. The resurrection of our Lord that brings us life eternal, that brings us hope, that brings us salvation. Uh, this is just the greatest day that there is for us to celebrate. So let's start off with a word of prayer. Father God, we give you thanks for who you are. We give you thanks for your incredible love. We give you thanks for the gift of eternal life. I pray, Lord, that everything that we do would bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
is calling
Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one our hearts adore. The hopeless have Stonebridge. Normally this time of year, Stonebridge would have hosted its annual glow-in-the-dark Easter egg hunt. Unfortunately, due to the circumstances, we were unable to do that this year. But we instead came up with a fun alternative. Last weekend, Stonebridge students and Stonebridge kids teamed up to host a virtual family scavenger hunt. 
Families competed against each other by completing fun challenges in their homes and sending in photos and videos. Check this out. I hope you can tell by the photos and videos. We had the best time. Follow Students of Stonebridge and Stonebridge Kids on Facebook and Instagram to keep up with all the things happening in youth and children's ministries. Happy Easter. Hello and welcome to Stonebridge Online. Due to COVID-19, how we will be doing church for the next several weeks is going to look very different. Feel free to pause this video during these announcements in order to grab all the information you may need. Are you having good days and bad days? Is social distancing making you feel socially isolated? Now more than ever, with the help of Zoom and other online platforms, growth groups are a vital part of staying connected. Following Easter, Pastor Neil will be starting a new message series called Family Matters. This will be a great time to join a virtual community and get the support growth groups provide. Contact Barbara Waite by giving her a call or sending her an email. Kids Church and Student Ministries continue to host online groups and fun activities for the whole family. Contact Miss Stephanie or Pastor Cynthia to learn how you and your kids can participate. We'd love to know that you're participating in worship. Continue to share your prayers and praises by emailing prayers at stonebridgecme.com or if you're following along in version, please take the time to fill out the e-connection card. You are important to us. Once again, welcome to online worship. Today's scripture passage comes from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Hello, Stonebridge and others who have discovered us recently online. It's Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Several years ago, I had the honor of being able to go to Israel and the privilege of entering into Jesus's empty tomb. 
on Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and we remember that his tomb is empty. But there's something else that we acknowledge as well, that we have experienced our own empty tombs. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we have risen with him. Our tombs are empty. We're going to talk about that today, but I'm going to get inside before the rain starts. It's Easter, and I've got climbing gloves. I have a question for you. If you knew you could climb and have no fear of falling, uh, you were secure, how high would you climb? Uh, I, as a pastor, have gone to, uh, with youth groups, to climbing gyms uh, on family events. And it was amazing to watch kids to grandparents, all ages, climbing up and down three stories high uh, and scrambling and racing and going and uh, perfectly comfortable, perfectly safe. And of course, you and I would say, well, sure, that's because they had safety harnesses and ropes. And so that's what made them feel secure. Uh, not exactly. They actually feel safe because there's an employee at the bottom on the floor below them who's holding the rope. That employee is called a belayer and they're basically standing in a belay station that is below and beneath each climber. And that belayer is guiding the rope and, and guiding the person. And the thing about these employees, these belayers, is they are so experienced. They climbed the entire gym. They could climb it with their eyes closed. Wherever someone's going, these people have been. They can make sure that they can get somebody out of trouble if they get in it. And as a person climbs, they say climbing and the belayer says, climb on. And what that tells that person who's climbing is they're slowly kind of looking for handholds and things like that. Uh, that. That person down below has been there and done that. And they say, climb on, you got this. We're in this together. And that gives confidence and security. When we're the ones doing the climbing, uh, the assuring thing about the belayer is that they have been there. And sometimes there's quite a handhold or a puzzling place to put your foot and you know they've figured it out. The confidence um, that we feel when we hear them say, climb on, is a reassurance. Hey, they're not gonna let us fall. They, we've got the harness, we've got the rope, but we've got our belayer at the belay station as well. We can make it. The, con the belayer has confidence even if we don't. Uh, that rope and harness are crucial elements in the safety protocol, but it's that belay station with that belayer on the floor that really gives us the confidence and security that we need to be able to climb as high as we want. So you probably know where I'm headed with this. The empty tomb is our belay station. Jesus is our belayer. Whatever we're going through, whatever challenges we face, Jesus has been there. Whatever temptations we have, he has faced them. And as we in our prayers tell Jesus what's going on in our lives, and in our way say, climbing, we've got challenges, we're not sure what to do, we're home, we're sequestered, we're social distancing. We're not sure what's going to happen with our families, with our jobs, with our nation. In a very real way, we can hear Jesus say, climb on, climb on. You've got this. I'm here. I've been through tough times. I know what you're going through. We've got this. Easter reminds us that we can live by hope, not fear. Hope means that we have confidence and security. The empty tomb, our belay station, gives us hope. Climbers with a rope and harness and belay station are secured to risk climbing. Followers of Jesus with an empty tomb are secured to live. To live with hope, not fear. But in fact, the reality of the resurrection and the empty tomb is that 
those things in the past give us hope for the future. So how did that get communicated on that first Easter morning? I mean, it was chaotic. We heard the story read that women went to the tomb and they thought the tomb would be sealed, but it wasn't. And the stone was rolled away and Jesus's body wasn't there, but there was a young man there and he began to talk to them. So, so let's boil it down. Here's what the message of the resurrection from the Gospel of Mark really tells us. There was a young man with one message, with two parts, told to three women. One message, two parts, told to three women. And they needed to hear both parts of that message. We need to hear both parts of that message. Neither part by itself is sufficient. But when they had both parts, those two and the ones they talked to later felt the hope and power and security and confidence to change from a scattered group of frightened individuals to an organized team of followers of Jesus who would change the world because they'd heard that message with its two points. And the first point is this, Jesus's tomb is empty. Jesus's tomb is empty. We could spend weeks talking about this. There are so many books and articles about the empty tomb. I've linked to one of those articles in YouVersion. And I just want to give you one way we know that the tomb is empty. It's because we're reading about it. We're reading about it in four Gospels where people felt so motivated to write the story of Jesus. So let me just ask you a question. If Jesus didn't rise from the dead, who would have written his story? That nobody's going to write the life and ministry of Jesus of Nazareth, who didn't rise from the dead, the end. Jesus' entire ministry and message was predicated on the fact that he would be taken and he would go to Jerusalem, he would die on the cross, and he would rise again. If he didn't rise again, we wouldn't have a single story, much less four of them. And besides that, there would have been nobody to write them. Because before Jesus rose, his people were scattered. They were afraid. They were headed back to their hometowns. Peter, uh, before he saw Jesus risen, he was headed home to become a fisherman again. After he saw Jesus risen from the dead, after the empty tomb, Peter became the strongest, most followed leader of that young church. The tomb is real. Well, let's just say somebody did write the gospel of Jesus of Nazareth, the man who didn't rise from the tomb. It would remind me of a documentary I just saw this last week. It's on National Geographic, and I've linked to it in you version because you're probably going to want to look it up. I'm not going to tell you what happens, but here's, here's the documentary. It's about a group of people who tried to do something and didn't do it. They filmed for two years people preparing the way and, and rehearsing and practicing and all of those things for this moment. And then in this one hour documentary, about five minutes before it was over, uh, they, they tried and they went to do the thing and they didn't do it. It didn't work. The end. Uh, uh, it's it just is fascinating to me. I think that if they hadn't filmed all that two years of footage, nobody would have done a documentary on the people who didn't do something. And that's what the Gospels would be if the tomb wasn't empty. But Jesus did rise. His tomb was empty and it's empty today. And his empty tomb gives us hope, a firm foundation, a belay station, a point we can look back to with hope and have hope for the future as well. And that's so encouraging, we might just want to stop there. Wow, Jesus' tomb is empty, that's enough for Easter. Oh, but it's not. Those women needed both parts of the message, and so do we. And the second part of that young man's message is this. Get going. Get going. Listen to the story again. It says, the young man said, you were looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. 
See the place where they laid him, but go, tell the disciples. Jesus' tomb is empty. Now get going. Two parts of one message. And the second part is just as, as important as the first. Those women were afraid, but they had faith to get going when they saw the empty tomb and to tell the disciples that Jesus had risen. Let's just stop there for a minute and reflect on what just happened with those women. Let me say it again. Those women were afraid, but they had faith enough to go and tell the disciples that Jesus has risen. So the first thing about that is it's women. And all of us could share that the church and the world has a long way to go in honoring women. But at least with Jesus, at his empty tomb, probably the most important point in all of human history, women weren't just part of it. They were the only ones there of all of his followers. And they were afraid. Last week, we talked about faith, not fear. And we said that everyone has some faith and some fear, but one is dominant. Those women's faith was dominant. And they have inspired us for 2,000 years that we don't have to have enough faith to not have any fear. We just have to have enough faith to get going in spite of our fear. And the third thing was they told the disciples that Jesus has risen. They communicated probably the most important truth of all of human history to those who would eventually communicate it to the world. Wow, those three women. And we may be tempted to stop with Jesus' tomb is empty, but the message of get going gives us the power to change our lives and to change the world. If the message of Easter were only Jesus' tomb is empty, well, we'd celebrate that ancient fact but it would have no impact on our lives today. We might have confidence for eternity, but what about today? What about tomorrow? What are we going to do? And if the message had only been, get going, without the knowledge of the empty tomb, well, we would just be full of works and information and having to do things without uh, direction and purpose, without hope. Uh, it would be an unpleasant life, but with both parts of the resurrection message, we have confidence and security, direction and purpose. So let me just ask you, do you have confidence and security in the empty tomb? I want to invite you to put your confidence, your hope in Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, because every one of us needs a belay station. It turns out that there is a human need for belay stations. Uh, you could call it a firm foundation, um, a grounding point in our lives. We're able to move forward only to the extent that we have that grounding somewhere in the past. Now, some of us, you know, we, we might know a, a family home in our hometown somewhere. Uh, others have an alma mater that is their grounding. And people who wear uniforms have codes of conduct and values and Doctors have their Hippocratic Oath. All of these things are things that ground those people. Well, it turns out that that need for grounding, for a firm foundation, starts at a very early age. Carolyn and I, when we were young parents, read a lot. And one of the things we read was that if parents will sit down on a bench or on the ground uh, and stay put, their children uh, will be able to go and play and they can play farther and longer uh, away from their parents than if the parents move around. So uh, if the parents get up and move, the child looks back and runs back to get more comfort and security from their parent. But stay put. 
So we tried it. We went to Lemon Park over by the police station in uh, Simi Valley and we sat on a park bench and we told our daughter to go play. She was about four years old and she did and we didn't move and she would play and look back and play and look back and she was she moved pretty far uh, of course not far enough that we felt uncomfortable but uh, we eventually called her back but as long as we had stayed put as long as we had been that firm foundation she was able to play now she couldn't have articulated all of that stuff but she could play the empty tomb is our belay station it's our firm foundation. It's our grounding point. And it gives us hope and confidence to face the future, to face today, to climb, to soar. Can you look back and identify Jesus' tomb as the belay station for your life? If not, why not make it so today? Why not pray and say, Lord, I, I want you to be my firm foundation. Why not look back to that real point in ancient history and make it the grounding point for your life today and tomorrow? If the empty tomb is part of your life, are you following the challenge of the second part of his message, of the young man's message, get going? Are you going? Is your life changing? Is there a difference in your life and in your world because of the empty tomb? If so, keep going. If not, or if you got started but you slowed down or you got off course, the Easter message from that young man is for you. I don't have to tell you what getting off course looks like or feels like. I don't have to paint a picture of a life that isn't going in a godly direction. We've all seen it or we've all lived it. But I'll tell you, it's never too late. It's never too late to let Jesus be your belayer, to let the empty tomb be your belay station. It's never too late to say climbing and hear Jesus say, climb on. In all my years as a pastor, with many down and out people who came and asked for help, I've only one time had a person, a 40-year-old man, alcoholic, homeless, come to me, tell me his story, and say, I don't want help. I want freedom. He had been an alcoholic for 20 years. He lived in a broken down van with a dog that bites people. And he was at the end of his rope. He had tried everything and nothing ever changed. He didn't want money. He didn't want help. He wanted freedom. And I knew it was freedom that he could get from God alone. And so I became the pastor who met every week with the homeless guy. And he began to be known around the church. Fast forward two years. He had joined AA. He had begun seeing a therapist. He had gotten into a growth group. He had served turkeys to the homeless on Thanksgiving. But he was still in a tomb. In fact, the way he said it to me was, I'm still in a jail cell. I'm still locked in. I can't get out. None of the things I've tried. Uh, I can't get a job because people are afraid of my dog. And my van can only go a few miles before overheating, so I can't go anywhere. And the alcohol has gotten a hold of me again. I'm locked in and I can't find the key. And I said to him, my friend, there is no lock on your door. The jail cell is open. You can leave any time you want. And he was taken aback and he, he said, well, what about my dog? What about my van? What about alcohol? I said, all those things are part of your jail cell. All those things are part of your tomb. They're the things that are holding you back. You can leave any time you want, but you have to leave all those things behind. Leaving behind the things that kept him 
locked in a cell, locked in a tomb, was the hardest thing he had ever done, but he got to work on it. For him, those things were part of his tomb. But in Jesus, our tombs are empty. There's a powerful message in that, and it's this, yesterday is not today. I don't know what your yesterday looked like. I don't know what you faced. I don't know what, you, what, what has happened in your life. I don't know what kinds of things are in your tomb with you, but yesterday is not today. Today is a new day because Jesus has risen and the tomb is empty. It took some time and it took a lot of prayer, but one by one, those things in that man's life fell away. Friends took care of his dog. The church helped him repair his uh, van. And the last time I saw him, he was starting a new business. Now I knew it was gonna take a while, but I knew he was gonna make it. When he came into my office with a great big smile on his face, a man who was different than the man I had met a couple years before, and he shook my hand and he handed me this. This is a six month sobriety coin from Alcoholics Anonymous. It's one of my favorite things I've ever received from someone. And he made it. He left all those things in his tomb. Perhaps our lives feel like a tomb without light or hope, but yesterday is not today. My friend, today the stone has been rolled away. The jail cell is open. The door is not locked. And in Jesus Christ, our tomb is empty as well. And so the message of the young man, the message of Easter is, get going. What would get, getting going look like for you today? The other thing about it is, today is not tomorrow. Tomorrow is a whole nother day. You've got an opportunity, we all do, to live life with Jesus as our firm foundation, with the empty tomb being our empty tomb as well. This week, why not turn your intentions towards Jesus? I just have a little simple uh, thing you can say, and it's this, Jesus, let's get going. As you get up in the morning and you get dressed, Jesus, let's get going. As you decide what you're gonna do with your day, how you're gonna act around the people around you, how you're gonna work, Jesus, let's get going. And hear him say, we're going together. Climbing, climb on. For the power that raised Jesus from the dead is the power available to us today to raise us from our own tombs and get going. That is the hope of Easter. And I'm just gonna say a little prayer and I invite you to pray it silently with me. Lord, thank you that you rose from the dead, that your empty tomb is our grounding point for our lives. I know, Lord, that there are things in my past that I haven't let go of. Right now, I think of them and I leave them behind in the tomb. Lord, I need you in my life. I want you to be my Savior and Lord. And I look forward to tomorrow with you in my life. Help me to get going, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love that so many people at Stonebridge get going regularly. Um, John Lewis and Dick Wells and Lee Crabby have written and produced a song called One Kind Act and Ainsley and Sally Thompson have taken some of the videos and photos of people in our church uh, that have come together and got going in so many different ways, literally around the world. So they've put this together for you, one kind act.
Even during this difficult time, prayerfully considered, we've been blessed with much. So let us continue in worship now by giving back. You can give by going to stonebridgesemi.com and clicking on online giving. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 9 and 10 reads, Honor God with all your first fruits and with your charity, and your barns will be filled to overflowing. Well, thank you for joining us for worship today. And now for the closing blessing. Hear from the words of Isaiah chapter 43. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. Though you walk through the deep waters, the Lord says, I will be with you. Though you walk through fires, the Lord says, you will not be burned, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One. I am your Savior. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.